Hey everyone, welcome to Vera's View. I'm back with another edition of my wins and fails for Raw and SmackDown. I'm going to start off with Raw this week. My first fail is Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns' interaction. I really felt it hurt Strowman's monster persona to have him retreat from the big dog like that. Now I know he is injured, but supposedly so is Roman Reigns. My next fail is when Cesaro and Sheamus win number one contendership for the Raw Tag Team titles in Tag Team Turmoil. I selfishly wanted to see Enzo and Cass win this one, but I understand the Hardys need some bad guys to play off of. Devil's Advocate in me says, though, that role easily could have went to Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. My next fail is 205 Live on Raw again this week. What bothered me the most was the fact that Jack Gallagher didn't pick up the win here. I feel like he would have gotten one really good reaction from that London crowd. My final fail for Raw was Alicia Fox versus Sasha Banks. I felt the match was long enough to get involved in, and I really hated the finish. Uh, Alicia Fox's shoulder comes up a little bit, and the commentators make this huge deal out of it. They keep showing replays of it. However, back at Payback, no one seemed to care that Samoa Joe's shoulders were up, so why are they making such a big deal of it right now? Um, my wins for Raw start off with that hot London crowd. They are doing some crazy chants, some really good singing. Um, I just really enjoy them. They made the show this week. Uh, my next win is Finn Balor getting the win over The Miz after Dino, as this London crowd has dubbed him, comes out, restarts the match, and bans Maurice from ringside. Nia Jax tells Alexa Bliss that she's going to be her BFF until she gets a title opportunity of her own. I think this is a really good fit for Nia right now. She's definitely not there 100% in the ring. So having her play this role of, like, protector, bodyguard, I think is really where she needs to be right now. Um, Samoa Joe's backstage promo was a big win for me this week. I really enjoyed it. He says uh, to Seth Rollins, it's not over until I say it's over. He tells him he's going to hear every ligament pop. He's going to hear every joint break. It's about to get really loud in the life of Seth Rollins. I thought this was really powerful. My next win, going back to that hot London crowd, is them chanting, uh, he's got kids as Cesaro attacks Heath Slater. Then Cesaro listens to the crowd and says, he's got kids, eh, and does this low blow, and the crowd chants, no more kids. So that was really, really funny. Back to Samoa Joe. My last win for Raw was Samoa Joe and Seth Rollins. Their match was really great. I'm never, it never, never ceases to amaze me, the speed agility of Samoa Joe. I just think he's so fantastic. I loved the Falcon Arrow that Seth Rollins did. And then Joe goes and uses the exposed turnbuckle to his advantage. He doesn't care that he's getting disqualified because it's not about the win for him here. He reiterates the fact that it's not over until he says it's over and he is far from finished with Seth Rollins. Moving back over to Raw, I mean, SmackDown, sorry, my fails start off with Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. Um, I felt this match did a really bad job of holding my attention, and also, like I've said, I hate it when they just recycle things. It's been dumb. We've seen it before. Um, my second fail, and my last one, again, I only have two fails for SmackDown this week, is the Usos promo. I don't understand what was going on. It seemed jumbled. The only thing we did figure out was 12 days, because we heard it about 46 times. Uh, my wins, however, for SmackDown start off with Jinder Mahal. He takes promo pictures with the stolen WWE Championship. This is how confident this man is that he's walking away with that belt at Backlash. Um, Kevin Owens outshining Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton with his promo. I love how he repeats things in French. I feel like it has to be really annoying because... It drives me crazy, and I'm Canadian, so I can only imagine how irritating it is to, like, a London crowd or, you know, especially that American crowd. Um, AJ Styles had a nice line this week I enjoyed. It was to Owens, and he said, You better enjoy being the face of America while you can because you're never going to be the face of SmackDown Live. But that was really good. I loved Charlotte's one-liner when she says, uh, I don't need anyone to introduce me because I need no introduction. Woo! Thought that was really good. I loved um, another edition of Fashion Files. This is a big win for me last week. This week, my favorite part was when uh, Tyler Breeze is holding a clipboard. On the back of it, there's a picture of the British Bulldog. It has sticky notes all over it. Say Fashion Faux Pas. The fact that it was the British Bulldog and it was in London just tickled me the right way, and I got a good little chuckle. Um, I also really enjoyed Nakamura giving Dolph Ziggler the strong style beatdown. There were some vicious shots in there, and I am excited for their feud. I hope it lives up to all of our expectations. 
Um, Sami Zayn's backstage promo, they're going to have a six-man tag. He's there with AJ and Orton, and he tells them to envision the win. Close their eyes and picture it. And when he opens his eyes, they've taken off on him. I just got a little laugh there. And my last win is going to have to be that London crowd and how into Fandangle they are. They freak out when he comes out to doing the whole dance and all that stuff, singing his theme song. He was so over. It just blew my mind. I'd forgotten how much they loved him over there. And I also really enjoyed um, Bree Zango's little cop outfits for the fashion police thing. Oh, that's really cute. Um, that's it for this week, though, you guys. Please check back soon for more Vera's View. I'm Vera for the WWFU Internetwork.